Armadia's will and her children. The young man has abandoned the maps and now prepares his armor with happy urgency. He sees you approach. Told you lies, but we had home in no time. Did you see? Gareth's back. He's here to take us home. Thank you. Now... It's peaceful here, but I'll not be sorry to see the back of these swamps. I would say I owe you my life, but I owe you so, so much more. It's peaceful here, but I'll not be sorry to see the back of these swamps. The young man has abandoned the maps and now prepares his armor with happy urgency. He sees you approach. Did you see? Gareth's back. He's here to take us home. Thank you now. And set their blade I pray you will bless their armor, so no curse will harm you. I pray you see them. I pray you. I told you lies. We'll be heading home in no time. Out of here now that Gareth's returned.
heart. I pray you see them here. I pray you see them. It's peaceful here, but I'll not be sorry to see the back of these swamps. Glad you're with us, Leia. Thank you, Garrett. We can't wait to go home. Blessed the jar on the plinth before you seems ancient, but is in surprisingly good condition. It's covered in pictograms that you can't understand, but you're sure you just saw one of them move. The pictograms spin to life, and you're dragged into a dream. You see the lizards of the ancient empire turning their backs on you, casting you out into the wilderness. As you roam, the human apes turn away from you, all but one. One smiles, one opens his arms, one says he'll take you home. Bracchus Rex. He promises power for a price. He picks off your golden scales, one by one, stripping you down to the bone. He promised you a crown, but all you got were shackles. You try to fight, try to reclaim what's yours, but a woman takes you by the hand and leads you to a tower. He promised he'd take me home, you cry. You are home, she smiles as she seals the door. This is where you belong. Your hand drops away from the soul jar, your skin prickling. In the back of your mind, you hear a small, scared voice whimper before fading to nothing. Something within you strains. You are replete. You cannot absorb more source. Divine blessings. The long-dead lizard's visions fade. This is the price of pride and greed. The villain got what he deserved. No amount of loneliness excuses wickedness. He helped a monster for selfish reasons. <laughs> what he did shames his people. We can finally get out of here Divine now that Gareth's returned. It's good to see Gareth's the pictograms on the jar stand fixed and still. Something within you strains. You are replete. You cannot absorb more source. Finally get out of here, now that Gareth's returned. Pictograms on the jar stand fixed. As you reach into the jar, the source flows into your body. You feel warm, lightheaded, and you pulse with power. You blink, and for a split second, you're looking through the soul's eyes. You see a locked dungeon, cards scattered on a table, and a pair of skeletons. The image only lasts a moment, and then you're back, the empty soul jar in your hand, while its power pounds through your body. This jar glitters and glows. From within, you think you can make out the distant sound of laughter. With a jerk, your mind is pulled to a scene in a tavern. You see a dwarf in the center of the room, joking us all around raw with laughter. All bar the zombies, who are slavishly serving food and drink. The door opens, and a tall, beautiful woman stalks into the room. She's flanked by heavily armed guards. You can't make out her words, but see the fear in the dwarf's eyes. The dwarf mutters a word, and the undead lurch towards the intruder, but are cut down like wheat. The dwarf tries to run, pushing her friends into the woman's path, but is grabbed before she can escape. As she's dragged away to a tower, you hear her cursing Bracchus Rex and his whore. Even when she's thrown inside and the door sealed, you can still hear her shouts. 
You pull your hand away from the jar, your head swimming. You can feel the dwarf's cold terror still twisting in your gut. For just a moment, Sauce swirls around you, and then, with a whisper, it cascades into your body. You feel light as the power of the universe fills your being. You feel your spirit jolt, and for a heartbeat, you're looking through other eyes. You see a dungeon and a table shared with two other skeletons before you collapse. When you open your eyes, you're back in your old body, senses buzzing with newly found source power. The vision fades. I've rarely seen such cowardice on display. Keeping the dead as slaves. What a disgusting display. She deserved every punishment she got. Being locked in a tower was more kindness than any necromancer deserves. The soldier stands on its plinth. Your teaching served me well, sir. The soldier stands on it. You see, or rather, you feel a far off land. Frozen breath hangs in the air, pine needles brush your cheeks, and in your arms you can feel a weight, a body, dead. But you have hope. Your vision swims. You're older, but perhaps not wiser. You march at the head of a shambling host, the enemies of Bracchus Rex melting before you. The scene twists again. Now Bracchus stands before you, a beautiful woman at his side. You lash out in treasonous rage, but cold arms bind you. You're sealed away in a tower. Your screams fill the darkness. You feel a jolt and open your eyes to see the soul jar before you, lying still in the vault. Your hand falls from the jar and grips the pillar as you try to calm your ragged breathing. As you remove the lid, a fresh wind fills the room. For a moment, you think you smell pine, and then power rushes inside you. You can feel source coursing through your veins. For a moment, you're seeing through someone else's eyes. You behold a dungeon, a deck of cards in your hand, and a pair of skeletons before the vision passes. The necromancer's memories fade to black, but the feelings remain. The memories of a necromancer. What could be more vile? Anyone who marches at the head of an undead host deserves whatever punishment they get. One must wonder how many more lives they took, how much more misery the scum caused. We can finally get out of here now that Gareth's returned. You've done well so far. Keep it up! It's my honor to serve you, sir. I told you, lass. We'll be heading home in no time. Soon we'll be done here. Proud to have you at my side. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The soul jar pulses with trapped life force. When you touch the glass, your vision wavers. You emerge on the prow of a fine ship. Your armor pulses with enchantment, dominating those who draw near. Your flag flies for Bracchus Rex, a tyrant who traded for your soul. With his power, your flesh and blood is no longer relevant. The vision fades as the soul thrashes, trying to sever your connection. In the end, greed masters you. You seek out the tyrant's vault to retrieve your soul, but Bracchus is ready with a trap. Thus imprisoned, you can only dream about what is out of reach. Your soul and that alluring armor. The vision shatters as the soul squirms away from you, curling up in the bottom of the jar. The soul jar pulses with trapped life force.
The soul jar pulses with trapped life. The soul flickers around the jar like a desperate, buzzing insect, but you hold its entire prison between your hands. As the soul spills from the jar, the arm in your bag revolts. It clambers out and falls to the floor. Shaking fingers fold into a crude gesture, one final insult before the bones go still. You catch the soul cleanly between your teeth and swallow it whole. This one might serve, but not for long. Good work, son. What word do you bring? I had no doubt. You bring me hope, sorcerer. I'll gather the other seekers and travel to shore. Meet us there as soon as you can. Gareth's voice echoes throughout the Enclave with such command, it could rouse a fawn to action. We move, seekers. Now is the time to resist. The Lady Vengeance will be ours! The others wouldn't let me join them for the fight. You should get moving, though. They'll need you at their side. The others have gone to get us the ship out of here. Hurry on, they'll need you.
goes there. Quite so. I am Marina the Brave. You are daring indeed to enter my domain. I'm an assassin of ants and crucifier of crickets. All rodents bow before me. So do lesser beasts. Like you, for instance. My title is bestowed upon me by the King of All Rats in honour of my renowned achievements. The rat launches into a lengthy description of rat royalty. Oddly, it sounds like a mixture of stories from dwarven, human and elven cultures. And Kelp Junitrim just laughed and laughed. Oh, what a wonderful weekend that was. To your surprise, the rat listens intently as you recount your time in Fort Joy and your escape into the hollow marshes. Oh, my friend, you are an adventure after my own heart. I have heard many stories in my day, but none as exciting as this. May I ask you a favour, perhaps? I want to know more. More! Return to me when you have a chance and share your adventures. I want to hear about every spell cast and cliffside scaled, every chest pillaged and every sword swung. But if you are to return, I need to make sure you remain in one piece. So let me share another morsel of information I've picked up on my travels. The levers in here are cursed. Best not to touch them unless you bless them somehow, lest they infect you with their torment. Now hurry back. I can't wait to hear if your ventures can hold a candle to the other. I mean, to my own. Knowing the reputation of Brachus Rex, we should tread gingerly. Valiant one! Do you have new tales to tell? Is that all you've got? I hope your next visit is more enlightening. What is this contraption? Before you stands an ancient shrine, runes carved deep into its rock. The runes are in no language you understand or recognize. The shrine seems completely inert. 
You feel the source inside you swell up, filling your chest, yearning to be free. Your power flows from your chest and into your hands, green tendrils of power slithering from your fingertips across the shrine. The shrine starts to vibrate and glow, slabs of stone gliding across each other as it begins to open. Nice.
I'm glad Han stayed behind. The boy's seen too much horror in his life already. Those magisters are gonna pay. I wanna see some gut spill for what they did to us. We'll find them, or we'll find another way. You would attack the magisters directly. I think they eager to die. Kerbin stares at the body of his dead comrade, tightly gripping his weapon in a cold fury. You would attack the Magisters directly. Are you so eager to die, Seeker? You cannot stand against the Shriekers, not without stronger weapons than these. This won't go unavenged. I'll see to that. You would attack the Magisters, I reckon. Are you so eager to die, Seeker? You cannot stand against the Shriekers, not without stronger weapons than these. We'll find them. It's we'll a good thing my injuries have healed. I wouldn't want to miss my chance to avenge our fallen. You would attack the magic. Are you so eager to die, Seeker? You cannot stand against the Shriekers. Not without stronger weapons. Those Magisters are going to regret they ever laid eyes on us.
It is you! What? No, that's not what I meant. You don't... remember me? I can't tell you how grateful I am for your kindness. Now I'm just trying to get used to life as a pig. It's not so easy. I never did enjoy truffles. Well, I can trace it all back to Bracchus Rex, of course. Many of us opposed his reign. Few dared to speak against him, though. A few of us wizards took the chance, though. We figured if we spread the word of his deeds, we might encourage enough people to come together, find a way to take him down. But we underestimated the cowardice of our comrades. All we succeeded in doing was being branded heretics and brought to Bracchus Rex's... The results were horrifying. A double curse turned into pigs and set aflame for eternity. I like not being on fire, so I don't want to complain too much about the pig part. I'm afraid I've never pursued knowledge so dark. Bracchus Rex's source talents were great, but some of his skills and devices were... I'm not sure. I have prayed to Armadia, but she offers no answers. Really? Oh, what wonderful news! If there's a shrine to Armadia there, I may return to my old self just yet. I'll head that way now. I hope to see you there. The ancient wooden door reeks of salt and seaweed. Not a single nick or gouge mars the detailed face carved across its surface. It also has no lock or handle, but when you run your fingers across the wood, the carved face comes to life. This ship has the claim of a captain. Unless you belong to Sex Zapper, I suggest you leave.
Slaver of the Seas. Think he picked that name out of a lucky bag? I be the guardian of me captain's flagship. I'm what stands between dross like ye and his life's work. Yeah, right. Cap doesn't die. He waits. Well, since you are so polite-like. No! The door falls silent. Yeah. I've had enough of your yowling. Get along then. This won't be of any use. This won't be of any use. It's broken. You see yourself in the mirror. It's quite a sight. And you thought Rivelon was flat. <laughs> 